All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I have a Glock 22. Of course, it's a 40 cal. It's a Gen 3. It is plain Jane. It has no modification to it. it the coolest thing about this gun is it has a uh, set of factory Glock night sights. Um, this is an extremely popular gun. You find these a lot as police trade-ins, uh, especially now since... Um, a lot of police used to carry 40s. Now, most people are switching back to 9s, which, of course, is what I prefer. But uh, this belongs to a buddy of mine, and he said, uh, make it cool. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Now, it's going to be a little different than some of the other videos in the past. A lot of people commented and said they want to see a little bit more how-to. Um, they want to see some more technique. And I, I tend to, I always kind of thought that was the boring part where I actually, you know, would would slowly you do the stippling and some things like that but i'm going to kind of go this is going to be more of a uh, tips and techniques type video of course you'll get to see the final product but i'll try to talk you through each step of this uh, this is going to be pretty basic what i'm going to do on here it's nothing you've seen on the channel before though uh, some things this glock is not going to get unless my buddy changes his mind i want to make sure and uh, talk to him before i finish finish the video and finish this gun up but it's not going to get any trigger guard undercuts and it's not going to, I think I'm going to do an index here, but I'm not going to do like a thumb ledge like you've seen before. And on the opposite side, um, I'll probably do another finger index, but we'll see. That might change before the end of the video. I'll double check with him, see what he wants. Now, a few things I like to have when I'm starting a gun. Um, and a lot of people I know probably think, well, man, why are you going to, if you show everybody how you do your work, aren't you going to lose your business? Well, honestly, if some dude's scrolling the internet trying to find out how-to videos on stippling a gun, number one, he's already got in his mind that he's uh, going to do it himself, which is fine. And any of y'all watching this are thinking, man, I want to learn how to stipple and do my own gun. Um, I'll be honest, uh, I do a lot of guns that where people have started stippling themselves, and I've had to fix, I've had to fix screw-ups. So... I mean, if you want to do your own stuff, that's fine. That's how I got started. I knew this is working on guns is something I enjoy anyways. And that's kind of how I got started in the, the whole framework business. So, and anything you see me do, um, I'll be glad to do for you. You just got to let me know. All right. Now, a few things. I've got to always keep a, a nice ruler. This is a nice flexible metal ruler. And it's got some real fine measurements, all right? It's got your metric on the bottom and uh, uh, your uh, standard measurements on the top. This is really nice about making nice straight lines, good measurements, things like that. First thing I want to show you on this gun is I'm going to do a border on it. And I'll show you my actual tool I do borders with. The one thing I like to do is, like, if I want to do a border, I want to have a consistent line around the bottom of the gun. That's where I like to start at. I've not done anything else to this gun nothing literally nothing i start with the outline and the borders first that's a little bit different than why i used to do things but i started using different tools and you just kind of develop your own technique as time goes on all right the more guns you do or whatever you just learn more about it okay i've done dozens okay of of guns now and you just you just like any craft the more you do it the better you perfect it so and everybody does it different you know if you're if you're a guy that stippled guns or you, you've done framework on your own gun before, you may not do it like I do it, but I'm just gonna kind of show you a few things that I do, stuff that works for me. All right, so on my measurement, and this might be hard to get in the camera, but I can't can't work the camera and show you exactly what's going to you, so you just have to listen. All right, so I'm gonna flush the bottom of this up with my thumb. Now you'll notice my ruler is kind of uh, vertical, north and south. It's perpendicular with my slide okay that's why i want it that's going to give me a nice flat line across the bottom of my frame all right if the slide wasn't on the gun i'd make sure i was perpendicular with the top of the frame you know either way no big deal all right so i want to make this first line again i got this flushed to the bottom of my thumb and right here i want to make a mark this is a fine tip sharpie i like using it because it doesn't rub off as easy as pencil i want to make a mark at four millimeter just a nice little mark right there you probably can't even see that on the camera. I'm going to come down over here to this side, trying to keep my ruler nice and straight. I'm going to make another mark. Four millimeter. One, two, three, four. 
boom, okay? And I'm gonna go for there, and I'm gonna kinda keep going around the gun, making that four millimeter mark. And then when I get enough marks to satisfy me, I'll start connecting the dots, okay? Sorry, the camera works a little shaky, but you get the point. Okay, now, I'm not gonna go through the, I'm not gonna start going through this entire process of me showing you making making four millimeter marks around this gun. So that's just one thing I like to show you that I do. Now, once I do get all my lines laid out, now some of them you can't, you can't make measurements everywhere off of the gun. There's not enough reference points to do that. Some of this, you just gotta have a steady hand and freehand a nice good straight line. If you don't like it, try it again, okay? The more um, strenuous or the higher the standard you hold yourself to, the better your product's gonna look at the end. Always go slow. There's nothing, you can't rush anything on this type of work and make it look the way you want it. I'll be honest, the first gun I ever did is one of my own guns. I'm not, to this day, I'm not 100% satisfied with it, but it's the first one I ever did. So that's kind of the way it goes. Um, but not, could I redo the gun? Absolutely. I could sand it completely back down and redo it. Uh, but it takes time. Time costs money. So, and eventually I may do that. Whatever. All right, now, after I get my, all my border lines laid out, uh, something I'm new, this is kind of a newer technique. I've used it several times now, but it's fairly new. This is my new tool I use for cutting my borders. I used to use a um, grinder, or not a grinder, but like a, a similar to a Dremel tool. When you see me start standing in a minute, this is the type of tool I use. These are not expensive, okay? This is a grip brand, and grip is not a super expensive brand of tools but it's very effective it's got a lot of nice tight tolerances in it it's a well built tool this is an air tool pneumatic tool uh, i run this off of a uh, 25 gallon air compressor any air compressor you gotta work uh, one complaint i do have about my air compressor while i'm talking about it is it's uh, loud all right my shop's not all that big so when i'm running this and sanding away this existing grip texture it's just I also, I usually wear ear protection just because it's so loud in here. Um, but anyways, back to this tool. This is a flex cut wood carving tool. This is called a shallow U-gouge. I don't know if I can get this to focus or not, but you can kind of see the way the tip of this is made. I don't know if I can get you a good focus or not. But anyways, what I'll do is when my line is laid out, and I'll show you this when we get there, I'm gonna take this and just actually carve away and this, it, it actually runs really nice and straight. I'll just carve out a nice, perfect line out of the plastic. All right, it looks a little better than uh, maybe some of what I've sh showed you on my channel before. So, and you can make nice curves and you can do all kind of stuff. So I'll kind of show you that when we get there. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, take the slide off this gun, lay out my border line, and uh, kind of show you how to use this. To be continued. All right, so the borders are on the gun, or drawn on the gun at least. Now, even though I did these in this uh, fine tip sharpie, you kind of got to be careful because this you'll rub that right off. Okay, I mean you can literally uh, lick your finger and rub that off. So once you lay your borders out, my suggestion is don't handle it a whole lot. Now, before I actually show you what this is going to do on the gun, of course I won't show you the whole process of doing it on the gun because that's going to be more. I'm going to show you more on some. Uh, some practice material on what this is going to be like. All right, so this is a plastic case that has some, uh, I forget, it's like Dremel tool accessories or something. Oh yeah, you can see down in there, it's got some, some grinding disc or something. All right, so when you use this tool, here's kind of how it works. You just kind of get some pressure and get it started and you're just carving away plastic. Okay, just like it was carving wood. Now, I'm not going to hardly go that fast when I start on this gun, but you can see this makes a nice, clean, deep line. Now, I've sanded it on this just so I can, I'm going to show you some stippling techniques on this same practice material here in a little bit, but you can tell this is just a really nice, clean way to do a border. It just it starts down in there. You're just going to walk it nice and slow. You don't want to let it slip. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm just easing along. I can make a turn. I can go 90 degrees. I can do whatever I need to do, okay? 
So this is a handy tool. This is a an expensive tool, believe it or not. This one's a one and a half millimeter. I went ahead and marked that on there. I got some other sizes, but I like this one and a half millimeter. I think it makes a nice border. It's not too big. It's not too deep. And I just, I like the way it looks now. So let's go ahead and get the gun over here and I'll, I'll kind of start going working on this bottom, bottom border here. Another thing when you're doing any kind of framework, you need to be comfortable. Uh, if some videos you might watch, if you spend some time watching videos on YouTube, guys will tell you, oh, you need to put your gun in a vise and you need to sand it by hand with sandpaper. And that's, man, I don't know why anybody ever do that. It seems like a total waste of time. But teach their own. So I want to actually cut out the line. I'm not going to go above this line or below this line. I'm going to try to ride the middle of that line all the way down through here. So here we go. And I, I like holding my frame in my off hand, and I'm right handed, so I'm working with my right hand here. And I'm starting at a point where I know I'm not right in the middle of a curve. I'm just going nice and slow. I just got me a starting point. I'm going to lay the gun flat. And I'm just going to work it. Sorry, I'm not in the camera. And I'm just going to start working across through here. I'm actually going to have to move the camera to get this, get y'all a shot of this. Sorry. I'll get you adjusted here in a minute, maybe. Okay. Okay. Another thing you see, it, it looks like I made a sleep mistake. I'm still kind of on the corner of this gun. I'm just going to start right back into it, just nice and slow, all right? If I were to slip, this, the end of this, I promise you, sharp, I would, that would jab right into my hand. I've, I have cut myself with these before. Not bad, but it does happen. You can see here that's a nice clean line and of course I'll have to go I actually usually go I'll go this direction and I'll come back this direction that makes that makes my borderline you can tell that doesn't look very deep that's gonna when I go back the other direction that's gonna make it nice and clean and even and I'm just gonna go nice and slow I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna make these curves and look around I'll do the same thing around my top border and that's how I do my borders I'm going to finish doing the border on this frame, and I'll get you on to the next phase. Just so y'all know, I wasn't kidding about you'll stab yourself. I mean, uh, this just went right to my wrist. It's not, <clears throat> it's not super deep, but it happens. You just got to be careful, guys. All right, guys, so I got my border laid out. Got it carved out there with the wood carving tools, and, um, I know it kind of looks strange against your factory texture, but what I'll do is after I go to sanding, I'm about to take my micro air die grinder, sand away this existing texture, and you don't have to go crazy with this. It's it's really not all that important. Like this part that right here, it's kind of technically smooth. You don't have to go crazy on that. You just you don't even have to go over it. Honestly, um, main thing is you're going to take out. On, these really rough portions of the factory texture on the finger grooves. And since you're not doing any undercuts on this gun, or at least I'm not on this one, um, it makes it pretty simple. Uh, all this goes away, and all this kind of back strap goes away, and that's all the same you have to do. Now, the reason I use this tool instead of like a traditional um, Dremel, is I'm gonna turn it on here and show you. Like I get on it and I run my air compressor. I got my regulator set on about 90 pounds. So when I get, I got it turned on. I know it's loud. Uh, I turn it on. The reason I like to use this, like, like 
if I put it in a bind, if you put a Dremel tool in a bind, it just goes, it goes nuts. All right, this is just, it just stops, okay? And that doesn't matter if I'm running it wide open or not. That's one reason that I really like this tool compared to an actual electronic Dremel. Because when you get that electronic, that electric motor in a bind, it just, this, this, your cord that would be on a normal Dremel, it just goes to tangling and knotting up. Where this just, it doesn't. So that's, that's why I prefer this instead of a Dremel. I know everybody doesn't have one of these, but that's just my two cents. So I'm gonna go to sanding on this, and I'll just show you just a few, for a few seconds, kind of how that goes. So, uh, and I don't have my compressor on right now, so it's just, the air's bleeding off, it's not building back. Now, as you can see here, uh, I'm using kind of a, I forget what grit this is, and I've used this same sand and drum on probably a couple guns now. So it's not as aggressive as it was, but I'm probably gonna kick my air pressure up to about 100 and run it thing wide open. But I, what I want you to see is I'm just kind of blending this to a smooth right here. This is kind of raised, you know, a couple thousandths. So I'm just gonna lay it down to where it's just flat all over. It's it's not complicated. And, it, and there's absolutely no point in taking a piece of sandpaper and just constantly sanding this down until it's like you want it. It's absolutely unnecessary in my opinion. So, I'm gonna go ahead and knock down that texture like I was telling you about, and I'll continue. All right, so most of the sanding is complete. That goes pretty fast. Uh, guys, after you get some experience doing these, the sanding process used to be my least favorite part, but now it goes quick, so it's not all that bad. Now, on the fingers, I was gonna show you something. On a Gen 3, one reason that I'd rather sand and do well, really any custom framework to a Gen 4 is because the texturing on a Gen 4 is much easier to sand away. Uh, on the Gen 3s, the sides, here's another Gen 3. I'll tell you about my plans for this gun later. This is a personal frame of mine. Anyways, um, on Gen 3, you see this part of the uh, existing factory texture is real, that's super simple to sand off. But this stuff right here is deep and you gotta take away a lot of material to get that the way you want it. Same thing on this back, like that's a it's a deep kind of texturing. So it just, it takes some time to sand all that away and smooth it out and get it to look like that. And it's kind of, you can kind of see some lines still right here. Listen guys, that none of that matters. Okay, you can still kind of see a line right there where the factory, once I once I put the actual stippling on that, that, that totally goes away. Same reason some people think, man, that's kind of rough looking. Well, that doesn't matter either. I've done it both ways. I've got these down to a smooth, smooth finish before I stippled it, and I've left them like this, and you get the same product in the end. So don't worry about that. All right, now something I was gonna show you back to these finger grooves. Since you do have to take, you have to sand down in here so deep, it, you end up deepening the finger grooves. If like for, if a customer wants their finger grooves left, uh, they end up with a little bit deeper finger grooves, which I kind of think feels a bit nicer, but so, or, you know, and a lot of people, I remove finger grease for a lot of people too, I think. If you watch my other videos, you've seen me do that, or at least heard me talk about it. So, I wanna finish sanding away these textures, 
and then the stippling will begin. All right, the sanding is complete on this weapon. We've got finger grooves, uh, existing texture removed completely. I'm just gonna give you an overview again, kind of what the sanding looks like. It's not, not that difficult. Just take your time, everything will go well. Now, you notice how in Sharpie, I've got this cross, this, these perpendicular lines laid out. Um, that's on there for the stippling pattern I'm doing on this gun, okay? And I'm gonna show you that on this right here. Let me get this set up. All right, you see I've got another set of perpendicular lines right here. Now, the type of pattern I'm doing on this, uh, let's see if my, oh yeah, we're warm. Okay, um, the pattern I'm doing on this is called the weave, okay? Let me get this around at an angle you all can see. All right, and when you're, I'm doing a weave, uh, I do a couple of different weaves. This one, I want to show you first, this tip that you're looking at. And I've mentioned this before, but I make all my tips for uh, stippling. So uh, there's a ch good chance you can't, you'll have to make your own tips too if there's something you see that I do. Um, but it's not, I promise you, it's not rocket science. But um, anyways. Uh, this tip is a thinner tip. This is called a, uh, this is kind of the triple weave, uh, I call it. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. And then I'll show you uh, the one, the, the double weave, okay? You'll understand where those terms come from in just a second. All right, and that, the double weave is what's gonna go on the, on the actual block frame. All right, so the way I start out on the triple weave is I wanna make, and I try to keep my iron as, vertical as possible. I don't want to have it laid over. All right. So the camera work's not going to be the best because of the way I'm having to hold this. But what I do is I'm going to start out by stippling three lines side by side, just like that. Okay. It's a little hard to see in the blue. It's a lot easier to see on a, like a different color frame. All right. If you hear me blowing, it's because there's a lot of this uh, burning plastic vapor that you're, you're breathing while you're stippling, and I always try to blow that out of my face. It's nice to have a little fan going. I don't have mine set up right now, but I will eventually. Now, the next thing I want to do is, you know, you see I'm following that, I'm staying in this 90 degree angle I've got drawn on here. I wanted to go the other direction. Three wide. Okay, now, I'm, and it's really hard to sh see on the blue. All right, and then what I can do since my my workpiece has already turned this direction and my iron has already turned this direction. I'm just gonna do the three right here. Okay. And we're just gonna keep weaving it together. Okay. And okay, since I know I'm gonna keep going this direction too, I'm gonna go ahead and since my workpiece is turned this way and my iron's turned that way, I'm gonna do three more. All right, you can see that this makes like a tile, almost like a tile, if you're familiar, if you've ever laid any tile in your life. You always turn every tile that touches one another's turn the opposite direction, if that makes any sense. So these are all the same size. These all kind of make a square and they just kind of lock together like tile do. And you just kind of, you just keep working it. So now when I turn the workpiece back this direction, I'm gonna go three there. I'm gonna go three here. All right, I didn't have to turn it right then, but I'll go three here, and I can go my three here, go three here. I can even go down the bottom side, depending on which direction I'm working. You can kind of work it like a pyramid. You can kind of start working it like a stair step, and it, it starts going pretty fast. You think, wow, man, that's gonna take forever. Well, it, there's, not a, there's no fast stippling unless you got a laser machine. So, so that you can, I hope you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing right here. Um, so anytime I see the lines that are running east and west, I'm gonna do some north and south lines right now under them. And this all, all this stuff will fit together. Um, you just gotta keep doing it, okay? I'll just turn my work piece. Three there. All right. Now, you'll notice that this like this plastic looks real sticky and gooey. It's because it is. It's not the same type of polymer that a handgun's made out of. It's just good for practicing. Every, everything I got in my house 
as that's plastic that's no longer usable. You probably has some kind of stippling pattern on it. So anyways, you just keep going like that and you see how it kind of makes that that weave, it look, everything was woven together. Okay, so that's, I've done this pattern on several blocks. Uh, I've done it on a couple SIGs. Um, it's, it's nice. It's a really nice feeling texture, especially for carrying. That, that's, it gives you a nice grit, but it's also smooth enough that it's not highly uncomfortable against your skin. All right, let me uh, get, I'm gonna sw switch tips out and I'll show you the double weave. All right guys, so you can kind of see, I've already got it. This uh, the double weave kind of going on on this uh, practice piece, and you can kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like. Instead of showing you again on the work piece, I'm just going to get started on this actual frame. Okay, and I won't show you the whole process of doing the whole gun. It's not that complicated. All right, everybody's got to figure a few things out on their own. Uh, I don't know if my iron's hot yet. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Now, so when I start this, I'm gonna, you got, I've got my cross laid out, and I'm gonna kinda start and do all sides of that, and then I'm just gonna keep going around and around it. Sometimes I do them differently, just kinda depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll start and make, like I might start down here and I'll do a staircase, you know, like, it's just down, 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 down. Like it's like you're climbing the stairs until you're getting the gun stippled. Um, so this time I think I'm just gonna go around. It'll just keep getting larger away from this point. And uh, so here we go. I always suggest wearing eye protection while stippling because the, the fumes that are coming off my iron, I know you may not even be able to see them on the camera, that junk gets in your eyes and it's not that big a deal, but it's kind of like getting smoke in your eyes. It just, it'll fatigue you after a while. Going to keep on. We're just going to keep going right here. Round and round we go. And those lines are nice reference. That way, if you start to get a little crooked, you can look back at your lines uh, to keep yourself straight. Really what I do is I just go around until, you know, I can't go, I, I don't have to start turning the work piece, you know. So I'm going to go with my verticals and then I'll go with my horizontals. And uh, that's basically it. I'm just going to keep, I just keep this pattern going until uh, I get bored. And I take a break and I start all over again and the whole gun will be finished. So, uh, I'll give you an update after I get some more of this gun. All right, everybody. This gun is officially halfway stippled. And if I do say so myself, it's looking quite nice. I'm going to get up here a little bit. Yeah. Nice double weave happening. Feeling good. Uh, so... So far, as far as just stippling, I've probably got about hour, hour and a half into that. So, um, so basically what's about to happen is I'm gonna repeat the same exact thing on the other side. And it's gonna be finished. I'll take this to my friend, my customer, and I'll get paid. So, uh, what I will do though, is to try to get, you see I've kinda quit down the spine here. And the reason I do that, if I keep going, around these rounded surfaces uh you get you get crooked like your lines stop being straight you can tell like if you follow if you follow any of these vertical lines they line up you know in a pretty straight line all the way across and if you go as you go around these rounded surfaces it's really super easy to get going sideways and the other side won't match as well so what i'll do is i'll take my straight edge and i'm going to line up make another perpendicular line and what I'll try my best to do is my line that I freehand 
around the curved edge, I try to line it up with what I already have stippled. So that's where we're at. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished up. All right, guys, this is my favorite part about stippling handguns is the final part. And I'm just tying all this together. The pattern isn't really, turn this music down. The pattern isn't really, you know, uh, consistent. You can tell, well, it's consistent, but you can tell like this side and that side don't collide exactly. But once you look, if you look, it's kind of hard to see it, not shaded. But if you look down through here, if I can get it to focus, if you look down through this area, it really, it looks fine. <laughs> I mean, it looks really good. Nobody's worried about it. So, I'm just going to tie it back together right here. You just kind of want to follow your pattern you've been doing. And um, make it match up best you can. It just It just feels good, you know, you spent. You know, I've probably got a total of four hours in this gun and seeing it come to completion is just highly satisfactory just weaving it all together and just like that finished I wear a glove on my stippling hand because that iron gets hot you sit here about two hours straight and uh, wow I mean I mean if you don't like that you just don't like guns or you don't like art I don't know I don't claim to be an artist but that looks awesome I mean, it's better than factory. It feels better. It's functional. This is probably, this particular pattern is probably my most popular carry choice. Guys that carry their guns, they really like this. And I kind of promote it as that because it feels like, I mean, you get a great uh, tactile grip on the gun. But at the same time, this is not highly aggressive against your skin. Uh, like if it's if it's ever you know against your body so I'm gonna float back together uh, give you all another look at the gun what it looks like completely put together boom just like that this is another Glock that is better than it once was in my opinion in a lot of people's opinion a lot of people agree with that some of you all are like man you ruined that Glock oh, blah 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 typical haters man typical haters but so what you're looking at in case you do like this um, this is a hundred dollar package all full-size frames that's like for example the Glock 19's Sig P320s, you know, if it's a full size, you know, full size, I'm talking like Glock compact and up, I consider those full size. It's $75 for stippling. All right, and that's no matter what pattern you choose. Right here's an old cell phone case I did a few years ago. It's kind of, it's kind of dirty between the stuff, but so right here, what you're looking at is a micro dot style stipple. I use that a lot, like going around logos and stuff like that. People want that. This is a mega dot. Uh, that's pretty nice for a carry gun. It looks cool and it's uh, it's not real aggressive against your side. This next one right here I call it Strike Out. Uh, it's just kind of all over the place. This is the, the triple weave. Uh, I think I showed you all that earlier. Um, and that's kind of a more of a square style look instead of the angled look. Uh, this is Gator Stippling. That's also very popular. This is what I call uh, Sprinkles. And this is sunburst pattern. So these are just a, these are just a handful of stuff I've offered. Uh, there's all kinds of options. If you check out the Facebook and Instagram page, you'll see other options. So, anyways, back to this gun. This is um, this would be considered full size gun. Well, this is a Glock 22. It is you know standard sized. And you're looking at 
$75 for this framework and $25 on this. This is called the HD border where I carve it out. Uh, there's other borders available. You can get your gun with no border. I, I don't care. Um, other options, thumb ledge. I charge $15 for a thumb ledge. I charge $15 for a single undercut, $20 for a double undercut. Uh, finger indexes, like if you just want this patch stippled on either side, that's free. I can, I'll can include that in the framework. So that's just some of my pricing, how I do that. If you want a custom logo, like I've done a gun with uh, Captain American Shields, um, that's, that's the custom logo start at $35 per side because um, it takes a lot of work. But I've done a Punisher Skull, uh, like I'm um, just... Uh, just all kinds of options, guys. Uh, check us out. Oh, also, by the way, between now, today is December the 21st, now through the end of February, I'm offering $10 off, all framework. So check us out. Give us a shot. Listen, oh, the best part about getting your gun done by me is that I have the fastest turnaround time in the industry. Uh, my buddy gave me my, his gun, I think, last Wednesday. Uh, today is now Friday, uh, since it's after midnight. He'll be getting his gun back in a week and two days. I could have had it sooner, but he said, man, don't worry about it. No no rush. And plus, you know, he's one of my buddies. I see him all the time. It's not like it's any kind of big deal. But anyways, if you want your gun, then let me know. You can ship it to me. You can ship it to my FFA. I'll do all my gun business through TNT Tactical. That's in New Tassel, Tennessee. You can check out their website. You can call them. You can message me on Instagram and Facebook. We'll make it happen. Thanks for watching, guys. You mentioned this uh, frame early in the video, this tan frame. Let me tell you my thoughts on this, what's going to happen. I think it's going to be my most epic um, stippling framework job to date. So I've just got this uh, Glock 22 slide thrown on here just so it looks like a complete gun. All right, so what's going to happen? All right. I'm not sure I'm gonna make a video on this because I don't know. It's probably gonna take a. It's gonna be happening over the course of the next month. Right now, it's December the 21st, uh, just after midnight. Anyways, um, hopefully I'm gonna have it done sometime in January, if not before then. Uh, I'll keep you updated. Uh, if you're interested in how this turns out, keep up with my Facebook page at Kremlin Gap Tactical and my Instagram page at Kremlin Gap Tactical. Uh, I'll have links and all that stuff down in the description. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this gun. This gun is going to be called a Glock 17X. It's going to be the Glock that Glock should have made. Okay. And so I want to have a full length Glock 17 slide. Um, I'm going to try to find a slide that's milled for an optic. If I can't find one, I'm going to get one and mill it myself or have it milled. And this, this frame, what I want to do right here is I'm from Tennessee. So on this side of the frame, I want to put the Tennessee TriStar. And on the other side, and of course, that'll be stippled in, into the frame. And on this side, I want to actually put an image of the state of Tennessee. Um, and what I'm going to do is to kind of have some contrast is I'm going to have, I'm not decided which contrast, which way I want to have it done, but the, the frame will be Cerakoted green with leaving the uh, my new symbols in tan or I may do uh, my symbols in green with the rest of the gun the tan so but and I'm gonna deck this one out it'll probably end up having a double undercut of trigger guard thumb ledge uh, everything but here's what's gonna be super cool is I'm gonna cut the frame down so that it is a 19 length all right so from here to here my finger to my thumb all right, this is the same, this is like Glock 22 slash Glock 17 full size frame. All right, but I'm cutting it down to the compact size. So, of course, I'll give you, and I'll give you some more details on the measurements of that, all that sort of stuff, if I choose to make a YouTube video on it. But I'm going to cut it down to take Glock mags, which I know when people, when Glock released the 19X, that's what everybody's expecting. They're expecting a full length slide with a 19 size frame. So, that's that's what I want. You know, everybody knows that barrel length, slide length is not that big of an issue when concealing, but your frame, all right, your handle portion, that's the part that shows. So it makes it more uncomfortable to carry in most cases. So 
I'm going to build it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. And there you go. So that's, that was kind of just the details I was wanting to share on what's going to happen with that.